Welcome to the Jongets Games tutorial for City of the Living. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as it's being played, and I will be showing about half of a game today. Now, before I go into that, I do want to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel and get access to a ton of exclusive perks, then please go to patreon.com slash Games. Some of those perks include my dozens of opinions episodes where I've talked about the hundreds of games that I've played recently, discussing the things I like and don't like about those games, as well as giving updated opinions as I continue to play them. You can also get access to some of my videos early and advertisement free and get access to an exclusive podcast feed where you can hear audio versions of all of my vlogs, including those opinions episodes I just mentioned. Now, coming back to this game, I do want to ask that if while you're watching this, some part of it jumps out to you as particularly interesting, then please leave a comment about that down below because I'd love to see that kind of feedback. All right, let's jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I'm showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections below this video in the top comment. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. Now, the setting for it is after a zombie apocalypse, and each player is in charge of specific fortified territories, and we are trying to essentially build an area that living people can actually survive in while fending off the zombie hordes. Now, the way the game works is on a player's turn, they first draw the top tile from this deck, and each tile has a single special icon that activates all of that icon on everyone's board. For example, if the activating icon is Fuel, then everyone will gain Fuel tokens equal to the Fuel icons they have face up in front of them. If instead the special icon shows a lock which represents our defensive fortifications, then players in the positive on that track will get to remove zombies from this area, but players in the negative will actually have more zombies clamoring at their fortifications. Now, arguably, the most important icon is Advantage. Whenever that shows up on the tile that's drawn, players will gain advantage equal to the number of those face up in their area, and having the most advantage at the end of the game is how you win. The problem is, if you neglect your defenses too much and zombies pile up to this point or more, then you cannot gain advantage in any way until you reduce the zombies back under that position. Now, I'm sure you're wondering how we actually change this area, and on each player's turn, they will take two actions from a variety of options. They can gain fuel, remove zombies, move up the scavenging track, and most importantly, buy tiles. Your position on the scavenging track dictates how expensive these tiles are, and after paying fuel for the tile, you simply place it onto a matching spot in your area, and it covers up the previous tile for better or potentially for the worse. Now, I mentioned at the start of each player's turn, they reveal one tile, and after that tile activates our boards, it gets placed into this supply before the player takes their two actions. Now, the game will end after 36 player turns, regardless of the player count, and then we'll perform end game scoring, and after that, the player with the most advantage wins the game. Now, of course, this was a high level overview of the game, and I'll explain how all of these things work in detail while we're playing, and on that note, I think it's time to start playing the game. For today's tutorial, we are going to play as the purple player here, and we are in charge of Ashenbrook, and we are also the starting player. So, let's now take the first turn of the game. At the start of a player's turn, they must draw the top tile from this stack, and as you can see, it says 1 on the back. Now, in this stack, there are numbers 1, then 2, 3, all the way down to 7, and in all of these except for the 7 stack, there are exactly 5 tiles. For the 7s down at the bottom, there is a 6th tile. We shuffled each one of these individually and then stacked them from 7 all the way up to 1. So we begin our turn by flipping this tile, and the first thing that we look for is the icon on this tile that has a white border. That will be the activating icon for this turn, and in this case, the white border is showing up on that defense icon. What this means is every player immediately performs a defense action, and the way we perform that depends on our fortifications. Let's focus in and specifically look at this defense track. As you can see, it shows the yellow lock above, which is for beneficial defense, and a blue unlock icon down here is negative defense. As you can see, this location has a dark background because that's where our indicator begins. And as you can see, it says minus two. Now we can actually see why it says minus two by looking over here to our tile area. We can simply count up the number of negative defense icons that we have and the number of positive defense icons that we have, and it will end up being negative two. We can see there's one, two, three, four negative icons and two positive defense icons, which again puts us in the negative two spot. There is also this cooperation track, which goes from 
positive cooperation with the check mark to negative with the red X. We start at zero because again, looking at our board, we have one, two, three, four negative and one, two, three, four positive. Now, once again, we are performing a defense action, and when we are negative on defense, we gain a zombie equal to the negative value we are at. We are at negative two, which means two new zombies are going to arrive in our area. We simply add them to the top of this track, and it is worth noting that we can gain more zombies than show on this track. We can simply have an overflow area, and if we cover this spot up, we have no way of gaining advantage, and advantage is how we win. So it is important to try and keep these zombies in check. I do want to point out, that when a defense action happens and you are in the positive, then you remove that number of zombies. In this example, we have positive three defense, so we would move the top three zombies from the track. Unfortunately, that is not the case for us. The silver lining, of course, is that this is going to equally hit everybody because no one's actually performed actions. We can see the blue player is also at minus two, so they gain two zombies. And lastly, the yellow player also is at minus two on defense, so they gain two zombies. Now that everyone has finished the defense action, we place this tile into the market. Now, as you can see in the bottom right corner, it has a gray one. That means we're going to place this on the gray side in the one row. So we'll put it right over here. The actual order of these tiles within the rows does not matter. Once the tile is placed into the market, we can now take our turn where we are going to perform two actions. As you can see, there are four action options, and we can perform the same action multiple times if we want. The first option says we can just gain two fuel. The second one says we can fight a zombie, removing the topmost zombie from our track and putting it back into the supply. The third spot lets us advance one space on a scavenge track, and the fourth option says we can buy a tile. For our first action, I think we're going to gain two fuel. We start the game with two fuel, so we take two more, which means we have four fuel total. And then with our second action, let's buy a tile. This lets us buy one tile from the market, and the cost to buy the tile depends on where our scavenge tokens are and where that tile is. Let's focus down here because this shows the relative costs. As you can see, when we buy a tile in the same position as our scavenge token on that side, it costs two fuel. If we instead buy a tile that is above our scavenge token, we pay two fuel like normal and then two more fuel for each level above us it is. Now there are two scavenge tracks with the right track dealing with the rightmost tiles and the left track dealing with the leftmost tiles. Now what this means is right now we could buy any of these tiles for two fuel because they are in the same row. If our token was there, it would still be in the same row. If we want to buy any of these tiles, it would cost two plus another two, so four fuel total. These right here would cost six because now it would be two above us. The last option though is if we buy a tile under our scavenge token, then it costs one fuel no matter where it is. That means if our token was all the way up here, then all of these tiles down here would only cost one fuel. These would still be relative to the right scavenge tracker, of course, so only the left side would be discounted in this example. Of course, our token is not up there, it's down here. Now, I think I want to buy spears. That is one row above us, so that's going to cost two extra fuel, plus the two fuel for the card, so we'll spend four fuel, which is why we picked up two with our first action. This does mean we're spending all of our fuel, but that's fine because this tile is going to get us more fuel. We can look at the bottom and it has all of these fuel markers. When we do a fuel action, when it's revealed at the top of the deck, this will get us four extra fuel, essentially paying for itself immediately. Now, when we place this tile down, it has to go onto a color matching spot on our board. Now, these green tiles are weapons, and as you can see, there are two weapon slots total. Now this spot begins the game empty, and that spot is knives. Those knives are currently giving us plus one to our overall defense, which helps keep those zombies at bay. Now we could put the spears on top of that, and if we did that, as you can see, we would go from plus one defense to minus one defense. Functionally, this would lower our defense by two because we lose the advantage and then gain one disadvantage. I don't think that makes sense. I think we should go over here where we are not covering up anything good. So we now have spears and knives, but that did lower our defense by one. So we'll move our token down to the minus three, but as I said, that defense icon only shows up once in each set of five tiles, and we just saw that one. So it might be a couple of turns until defense hits us again, and maybe we can find a way to increase our defense before we have to do another defense action. Before we move on, I do also want to point out these X icons and the lines. What these mean is you cannot place blue tiles into any of these spots until the associated weapon spot has a tile placed on it. So by putting spears here, we can now put a blue tile there. If we instead covered our knives with our spears, that would unlock both of these blue spots, but again, that would also lower our defense one more, and I don't want to do that. We've unlocked one open spot for a blue tile, and I think that's good enough for now. 
Well, that's finished two actions, and that means our turn is done. So play can move clockwise down here to the blue player, and as always, they start by drawing the top tile from the deck. We look for the white icon and its fuel. Awesome! You can see that is a different background for the rest of these. This means everyone will now gain fuel equal to the number of fuel icons in their area. At the start of the game, everyone has two fuel showing up on the killing fields, so blue is going to gain those two. Yellow also gains two. But we get two plus four from these spears that we just bought, so that is six fuel. We have these fuel tokens, and we also have five fuel tokens to place in front of us to make it easier to count. Everyone's performed the fuel action, and this tile is a pink three, which means it goes here. All right, blue can now take their turn, and with four fuel, that means they could technically buy tiles with both of their actions, as long as each tile they bought only cost two fuel. It looks like they decided to do just that. They're going to begin by purchasing the all-terrain vehicles over here. It costs two fuel because it's in the same line as their scavenge token. So they spend the fuel, and then they can place this onto any of their three transportation spots. They could put it here. That would give them plus four to their cooperation, but it would be minus two to their defense. Instead, they could go here. As you can see, that would replace a minus two defense with minus two, so it would not change their defense at all, but they would only go up one on cooperation, or they could split the middle, go down once on defense, but then go up three times with their cooperation. Looks like they've decided to go all in and not worry about the defenses. We've already seen one defense action already. They know another one's coming up relatively soon, but they're hoping that this cooperation will give them a benefit that they can use before those zombies hit their fortifications again. So their defense goes down by two, and their cooperation goes up by four. Now, cooperation has not activated just yet, and when you are positive on cooperation, you get fuel. So it looks like they are hoping to use these all-terrain vehicles to get extra fuel so that they'll have more fuel to spend on their next turn to perhaps do something about their really bad defenses. Well, that was their first action, and now they're going to spend their other two fuel to buy another tile with their second action. For this, they've decided to buy a moat. This is a blue fortification tile, and they can't place it on any of these locations because none of them have been unlocked by a weapon being placed above those just yet. So they have to place their moat onto one of the other three fortifications they already have. And when we focus in, the moat has one scavenge icon. So they could cover up their wooden fences with a moat. They would have the same amount of scavenge icons, and they would increase their cooperation once again. The thing is, they want to have multiple scavenge icons because we haven't seen a scavenge action just yet. So that means they could go up here. That would increase their defenses once, but it would lower their fuel production by two and actually lower it to zero with the fuel action. That being said, they could just rely on getting fuel from their cooperation. And the last option up here is the moat. That would increase their cooperation once, but it would lower their defense once again, their defense is already at minus four, and they know they have to do something about their defense relatively soon. So they've decided to cover up the killing fields. Yeah, they're going to rely on their cooperation right now for their fuel needs. This covered up a negative defense spot, so that is certainly good for them. That brings them back to minus three. But of course, if nothing changes and we do another fuel action, they will get none. Well, blue is done, which means yellow can go. They start by drawing a tile, and the white border icon is scavenge. So that means everyone can do a scavenge action, and we'll start with the yellow player. They begin by counting their scavenge icons, and they just have the one they start the game with. And for each of their scavenge icons, they can move one of their scavenge tokens up one step. If you have multiple scavenge icons, that means you can move up both of these tracks independently. But in this case, yellow only has one scavenge icon, so they're going to move this one up once, or that one up once. After thinking about it, yellow wants to go up this step here, and I do want to point out that the left tiles over here generally increase cooperation, but decrease your defense, whereas the right tiles are going to increase your defense, but lower your cooperation. Next up, we have one scavenge icon, so we can go up one track, and currently our defense is kind of bad, so I think maybe we should go up this track here. Finally, the blue player has two scavenge icons because they bought this moat and did not cover their wooden fences. This means they could go one and one, but instead they're going to move this one up two steps because their defense is really bad right now, and that does get them to the next row, which means these helping defense tiles are getting cheaper. In general, the further up tiles are, the more effective they are. All right, now we can place this tile in the correct spot. This is a drawbridge. It lowers your cooperation by three, which thematically makes sense for a drawbridge. It increases your defense by two, and it increases scavenging by one. It's a gray one tile, so it goes down here. And now yellow can take actions. The first action they want to do is a scavenge action. This simply lets them advance one space on one of the scavenge tracks. 
they're going to move this token up so it's now in the next row. And then for their second action, they are going to buy these motorcycles. It's only going to cost them two fuel now because they are in the same row. It's worth noting, they could buy these machetes for one fuel if they wanted because it is below their token. They would really like to increase their cooperation, though. We haven't seen a cooperation action yet, which means it's coming soon. So they spend the two fuel to buy motorcycles, and now they place this on one of these three spots. If they covered up the scooters with the motorcycles, their cooperation would not advance, but their defense would go up once. They could keep their defense even and increase their cooperation twice by replacing the horses, or they could risk it and lower their defenses more. I think they are going to replace the horses. They don't want to be as risky as the blue player has been. So they'll cover this up. It is a minus one defense and minus one, so no change there. And then plus two for the cooperation. That means their cooperation is now at the two level. And that finished their second action, so they're done. This means we get to go. We start by drawing the top tile, and it is cooperation. You can see that white border there. Now, this is not something we focused on. We are at zero, so nothing happens to us. It is worth noting, if we were in the negative, then for every negative we were at, we would have to lose two fuel or gain one zombie. Fortunately, again, we're at zero, not negative. Next up, we can see blue is at plus four for cooperation. This gets them four fuel. Finally, yellow is at two cooperation, so they get two more fuel. After this, we can place the tile down. It is cars. It is two for cooperation, one for minus defense, and it is the pink one, so it goes down here. Well, it's now our turn, and we currently have six fuel available to us, although our scavenging levels are not great. We could spend one action bumping this up, though, and then that would give us a nice discount for purchasing other tiles. We could also just buy two tiles, spending without any discounts, but we do have a lot of fuel right now. I think we'll go with the first option. We really could use more scavenging to get these tokens up, and barbed wire looks great. So I think let's spend our first action going there, doing a single value scavenge, and then for our second action, let's buy the barbed wire. It's going to cost two plus two fuel because it's one row above us. That is four fuel total, leaving us with two fuel remaining. And then we can place this here. It is open and it is unlocked by the spears. The thing is, if we did that, we would lower our cooperation once which means we would be in the area where we might start losing fuel or gaining zombies. Both of those things are bad. We could cover up the killing fields. These spears are giving us four fuel. The killing fields are giving us two, which is certainly nice, but it also has minus one defense. If we covered that up, we would actually increase our defense once, although it does still lower our cooperation. The only way to not lower cooperation is by covering a negative cooperation already, and I don't want to do that. Let's go with this spot. We unlocked it. We should use it. So that is going to lower our cooperation once, putting us at minus one. And that finished our two actions, the first being the advance one on the scavenge track, and the second being buying a tile. Well, blue is next, and this is going to be the last tile for one, because this is the fifth tile from that stack. Now, I mentioned before that in every one of these sets of five, there is one of each of the five icons. That means we can all deduce that this tile is going to have the advantage action on it, because we haven't seen that just yet. We flip this over, and sure enough, it's right there. This means everyone will gain advantage equal to the number of advantage icons they have in their area. Blue currently has no advantage icons over here, but they do have one uncovered on their zombie track. As you can see, there are a couple more advantage icons there. This is one reason why it's good to clean out these zombies, because they can reveal more advantage icons, and advantage is how we win the game. Now, I mentioned before that if you have zombies reaching or past this spot, you do not gain advantage for any reason. Fortunately, that's not the case for any of us just yet. So, they are going to gain one advantage. And in fact, all of us will gain one advantage because no one's really specialized on that just yet or been overrun with zombies. So we all go from zero to one. And then this tile is a gray three. This is the wood barracks. It lowers your cooperation once and lowers your defenses, but it increases your scavenging and gives you an advantage icon. That means having this in your area when the advantage action happens is going to give you more advantage, which is going to help you win the game. It is, of course, bad for both of the tracks on your board. Now blue can take actions, and they're going to buy two tiles. They're going to start by buying bows and arrows. That will cost them two because it's in the same row as that scavenge token. And they'll put it here. It didn't cover up anything, and it unlocked this fortification spot. On this tile, it shows one defense, so that will move them to minus two. Then with their final two fuel, they're going to buy wooden walls. That is again two because it's in the same row as their right scavenge token and they're going to place that onto their newly unlocked fortification spot. This increases their defense two more times, bringing them all the way to zero. 
This means they're not going to gain more zombies when the next defense action happens, and it gets them really close to being positive, and when you're positive with the defense action, you can remove these zombies. Now, the wooden walls aren't great for cooperation. That did lower them down one there, but they were so high already. Effectively, that just reduces their fuel production by one, although they don't have any other fuel production, so that might end up costing them, but for now, they are happy being able to deal with the really bad defense that they had going into this turn. Blue is done so yellow can go, and they draw the top tile. Once again, we have gone through all of the five ones, so now we are in the twos, which means we once again are going to see one of each of the five actions in the next five tiles. This could be defense, in which case the blue player will be very happy. It is cooperation. Okay. Yellow's pretty happy to see that. They will gain two fuel because they are at positive two cooperation. Us, on the other hand, less happy to see that. <laughs> we are at minus one cooperation. This means we have to either lose two fuel or gain one zombie. I do not want to lose fuel. We need this in order to make our area better. So I think we're going to gain a zombie that does cover an advantage spot, though. So if the next card is advantage, then our opponents will start to get ahead of us on that track. Finally, the blue player has three positive cooperation which means they get three fuel. Now we can place this tile down. It is Vance. It's minus two defense, but five cooperation. That is a lot. We can see it is a pink three, so it will go here. Well, yellow now gets to go. They currently have six fuel, and considering cooperation has already gone, they want to focus on maybe increasing their defense, and considering cooperation has just happened, they might lean into lowering that to increase other things for those actions that are coming up very soon. Well, they've decided to start by buying machetes. It is underneath their scavenge token, which means that only costs them one fuel. They're going to place that here, which does lower their cooperation once, and it's also going to increase their fuel production by two when that action happens. And we haven't seen the second stack fuel action yet. They have five fuel remaining, and they're going to spend two of it to buy this drawbridge. They're gonna put it here in this fortification spot they just unlocked with their machetes, and it's bad for cooperation. It lowers them three times to minus two, but again, the cooperation action just happened for the twos, and it won't happen again until we get into the threes, and who knows, it could be late in the threes. What they do know is that defense and scavenge are probably coming up soon, and this is very good for that. Their scavenge went up by one, and their defense goes up by two, bringing them to zero. They also still have three fuel remaining, so overall, they're feeling pretty good about that turn. That's two actions done for yellow, so now we get to go. We draw the top tile, and it's fruit trees, and unfortunately, it is an advantage action. I say that because we have no advantage showing, because this one zombie covered that up. Maybe we should have ditched two fuel instead of gaining that zombie. Oh well, we have to deal with the decisions that we've made in the past. Down here, blue is going to gain one advantage, and up here, so will yellow. This means they both go up to two, we stay at one, and then we can place these fruit trees down. As you can see, this is a yellow tile. We haven't really talked about those just yet. These are provisions. This increases your advantage when scored by one, but it does lower your defense by one. It is a pink four, which means we place it over here. Now, I think I'm going to be talking about provisions pretty soon, so we'll hold on to that for the moment. And now we can take our turn. For our first action, I think we're going to take two fuel. We make so much fuel, but unfortunately we did not have that fuel production action happen before this turn. And the reason I want four fuel total is so that we can buy this water purifier. It is one row above our token, so that's going to be two plus two or four fuel. We go down to zero, but we're going to get six fuel the next time a fuel action happens. Now again, the yellow border means this is provisions. And as you can see, everyone's area has a single spot for provisions, so we can only put this here. Now, we all begin with canned food stores that lowers our cooperation by two. These water purifiers also lower our cooperation by two, so it does not affect cooperation. What it does do is increase nothing to two positive defense. That is really good considering we were at minus three. We are still negative, unfortunately, so we're still looking to gain zombies when that action happens, but at least we'll only gain one instead of three. All right, two actions are done. This means blue can go. They reveal the top tile, and it's a bus, and it's a fuel action. They start by gaining no fuel. They covered up their only fuel on their board. Up here, yellow gets four fuel with two from their base killing fields and two from the machetes. Lastly, we get six fuel. I really wish we had this one turn earlier. 
Honestly, the blue player was probably thinking the same thing, considering there are many opportunities to increase fuel production. Either way, we do have to put this bus down. It increases cooperation three times, but lowers defense twice, and it is worth two fuel when we do that action. It is a pink two, so we'll place it over there. Blue can take actions, and they're going to start by purchasing the spiked bats. It costs one fuel because it's under that scavenge token. They're going to place that here, covering knives. Now, both knives and spike bats increase their defense by one, so there's no change there. Unfortunately, spike bats do lower their cooperation, so the net result here is just lowering their cooperation, except by putting this weapon here, they've unlocked both of these fortification spots, which was very important to the blue player. Speaking of that, for their second action, they're going to spend one fuel once again, because they're going to take this brick barracks, which is under that scavenge token. They'll put this here in one of their newly unlocked fortification spots, and that increases their defense once, which means they are actually at positive one defense. That's finished their two actions, so now yellow can go. They draw the top tile, and it is a scavenge action. Yellow starts, and they have two scavenge icons, which means they can advance twice, one on either token, or one token can go up twice. They've decided to move their left token up twice. It doesn't quite get them to the next row, but they could spend an action going up here on their turn to then make it cheaper to buy up here, or they might not do that. We'll just have to see. Next up, we have three scavenge icons. Currently, we are at negative one cooperation and negative one defense. We're not doing great on either of those fronts. Fortunately, we make a lot of fuel. That's a long way of saying, I don't think we want to prioritize one side over the other. So with these three advances, I think let's go one, two to get it into that row. And then let's move either of these up, keeping them essentially equivalent. And I think we'll just go here. There's more tiles on the left side than the right side currently. So that should give us more options. Lastly, the blue player scavenges twice. And they've decided to try and keep things even as well. They're going to bump this one up twice, getting to the same row as their other token. All right, this command center tile can be placed. It lowers cooperation twice, but increases defense twice. That's nice. And gives you a scavenge icon. This is a gray three, so it goes over here. Yellow can take their actions now, and they want these vans. That would cost them four fuel to just buy. They do have seven fuel, but they've decided they're going to spend one action scavenging once to go up a step. Now, this van only costs two fuel. This brings them down to five, which is still a decent amount. And they could put the van here. That would increase their cooperation by a whopping five, but it would lower their defense by two. We haven't seen a defense action in a while. They've decided instead to replace their scooters with the vans. The scooters and the vans are minus two defense, so it doesn't change their defense, but the vans do add two extra cooperation, so that brings them from minus two up to zero. They are at zero on both of those tracks. Well, yellow is done, which means we can go, and it is a defense action. We are currently at minus one, which is better than minus two, I suppose, but that does still mean we gain one zombie. Blue, on the other hand, is at positive one. That means they remove one zombie from their track. If they were at positive two, they would remove two zombies and so on. Up here, yellow is at zero, so there is no effect to them. Now we can place this provision tile down. It is ammunition supply. It lowers your cooperation by one, but it's worth noting the canned food we start with lowers cooperation by two. So by taking this over the basic one, you actually increase your cooperation. This also increases defense twice. This is a gray five though. It's starting to get pretty expensive to get to. All right, we can now take actions, but I think before we do that, I'd like to talk about how the game ends and how we do final scoring. Now, as I mentioned before, this stack of tiles has 36 in it, and we keep playing until the final tile is revealed, we finish that player's turn, and then the game is over. At this point, we will start endgame scoring, and it involves some activations of actions we've already seen. The first thing that happens is you activate your cooperation track twice in a row. This could give you a bunch of fuel if you are positive, but if you are negative, this could reduce your fuel or, even worse, give you a bunch of zombies. After that, we then activate our defenses twice in a row, and once again, this could be great or terrible, especially considering if you have at least one zombie on this spot or more, you can't score any more points, and that also applies to the rest of final scoring. So if after this double defense activation, you have too many zombies, you could just stop scoring there and you're probably going to lose. Again, these each activate twice, so if you are in a negative situation when we go into endgame scoring, that could get pretty precarious. After that, we will all perform another fuel action, and after that's done, we can spend six fuel for one advantage as many times as we can afford. After that, we perform a special scavenge action, and I say special because you're going to count up the number of those icons and go up that many times on both of the tracks. 
Once that happens, we will score for the tracks. The player who is highest on each of the tracks will gain three points. Second highest will gain one. And if there's a tie for first, then the tied players get two each, and there is no second place scoring. Likewise, if there is a tie for second place, then no one gets that point. Finally, we will all do one more advantage scoring. Counting up the icons that show up in our overall area, we add that to our score, and at that moment, the player with the most advantage wins the game. If there's a tie, then the player with the most leftover fuel will break the tie in their favor. If there is still a tie, then the tied player with the least zombies will break the tie. And if somehow it's still further tied, then those tied players share in the victory. Now once again, the game is always going to be 36 turns long, and we are about to start the 10th turn, so we've seen almost a third of the game so far. Alright, let's come back to our turn, where we have two actions to perform. Now, as I said before, we are in the negative on cooperation and defense. That's not great, but I think we're not going to be able to fix both of those this turn, and instead, I'd like to lean a little bit more into scavenging to try and increase our advantage there. We currently have the most scavenging at three, and we could gain another one bringing us to four, so let's go for it. I think we should begin by purchasing the wood barracks. It is one row above us, so that is going to be two fuel plus another two for the tile. This leaves us with just two fuel remaining, and I'm going to cover the killing fields with it. That is going to be even for the negative defense, but we do lose another cooperation going from minus one to minus two. That's not great, but <laughs> it's the zombie apocalypse. It's not all going to be easy. One thing the wood barracks does do for us is it gives us an advantage icon when we score that, as long, of course, as we are not overrun by zombies, and it gets us our fourth scavenge icon. The tiles are getting a little dried up down here, so I'm hoping that scavenge advantage will get us up here into the more powerful tiles sooner than our opponents. We already make a decent amount of fuel so that those purchases won't even be that expensive, and hopefully we can turn things around for us with these better tiles. We do have two fuel left and one action, so I think let's spend the two fuel buying the bus. This is transportation, and it will increase our fuel production by two. The problem is it's minus two defense, but it is plus three cooperation. I was thinking we could cover scooters that would keep our defense the same and our cooperation the same. The problem is both of those are bad. Now we're about to see a new set of five tiles, so both defense and cooperation are going to be happening soon. Part of me feels like <laughs> leaning into it and going there. That would lower our defense to minus three, though, and then we would definitely be overrun, essentially negating the benefit we would get of scoring that advantage. That's probably a bad idea. Yeah, even if we go to horses, that would increase our cooperation twice, but it would still force us to take two zombies. Ooh, we still might have to with our cooperation down so low if we don't have the fuel to spend. It's tough, but I think we're going to go with the cautious route and hope to try and score that advantage. So we'll cover that up effectively, just increasing our fuel production by two. We spent two fuel for it, so that seems like a reasonable deal. Maybe we're being too cautious, but that is what we're going to go with. And now the blue player can go. This is the first of the threes, and it is fuel right away. Wow, this fuel depot is worth six fuel when you activate it with a fuel action. Down here, blue still does not have any fuel in their area. That's essentially the cost they have for being positive on both of their tracks, I suppose. Up here, yellow gets four fuel. And we gain six, four from our spears and two from the bus that we just got. This is really fortuitous to us. That gives us fuel to spend to pay for our negative cooperation instead of getting more zombies. Of course, we need fuel for more tiles, but we'll just have to deal with that when it comes. All right, this fuel depot is actually really cheap. It's a pink one, so it goes down there. It's very easy for any of us to get access to a ton of fuel. The problem is it's minus three cooperation. Well, it is the blue player's turn, and even though fuel just got activated, they think this fuel depot is something they really need. Uh, they have gone through a couple fuel actions, getting none. Their cooperation is not amazing to give them enough fuel. So yeah, they're going to spend this one fuel because that tile is lower than their scavenge token, and they're going to place this here. That means they just lose three cooperation, which does bring them to minus one, which isn't great for them overall, but they have some room to spare with the zombies, and they're still positive on defense. And again, most importantly for them, they are now making six fuel when the fuel action happens. Unfortunately, it's going to be at least four turns until that does happen. They're thinking about the future, though, and they only had one fuel, so they did not have that many options available to them. Now they have no fuel, and they have one action left. Now remember, they could just remove a zombie for an action. I don't think they're going to do that, though. They could also scavenge once, but I don't think they'll do that either. They're just going to take two fuel from the supply for their second action. 
All right, that was a quick turn for blue. So now yellow can go. They have a lot of fuel up there. The next action is going to be cooperation. Yellow is at zero, so nothing happens to them. And we are at minus two. Uh, that means we could take two zombies or one zombie and spend two fuel. But I think at this point, we just need to spend the four fuel. That's really unfortunate, but I do not want to get more zombies. I, I really don't want to fall behind on that advantage track. Down here, blue is at minus one on cooperation, and they are really worried about their fuel situation. They don't want to spend these. They're going to take one zombie for that penalty. All right, this new tile is a pink four. It's trucks, it's four cooperation, and just one negative defense. Now yellow can go, and they are rich. They have nine fuel. They're going to start by spending two fuel to buy this chicken coop. It's in the same row as that scavenge token, just barely. These are provisions, and it will cover up their starting canned food stores. They go from minus two cooperation to minus one, effectively bumping their cooperation once, and that increases the fuel they make on those actions by two. After that, for their second action, yellow is going to buy stone walls. That will cost two fuel because it's in this row. They're making really good use of the scavenge token. They got up to that third spot. They already had a bunch of fuel, and this is going to help them get more. They're actually going to cover up their killing fields. This means they lose one cooperation because there was nothing there before. This brings them back to zero, but then they're going to cover up one negative defense. That will increase their defense by one. This does cover up two fuel with four fuel, so they effectively increase their fuel supply by two. Well, that's their turn done, so now we get to go. The next event is going to be scavenging. Nice. I'm starting to get a little worried about our position, and this might be the break that we need. Looking at our area, we have four scavenge icons. Honestly, I think we need to spend all four of them on the left side. We are at minus two cooperation, and that is a problem. Also, this side has shotguns, which could potentially help us out with fuel, although it lowers our cooperation. Yeah, I, I don't think we should go even right now. We couldn't get up to this level on both anyway. Let's focus over here. We'll go one, two, three, four. It's two steps away from the next row, which would be nice. We'll just have to see if we do any basic actions to get there. Next up, blue has two scavenge icons, and they're going to move up twice on the left side. Finally, yellow has two scavenge icons, and they've decided to move twice on the right side. They're pretty far off with the left one already, and they don't want to completely leave this behind. So yeah, that'll get them up there. And now we're going to place the lookout towers down. This is a gray two. It's minus two defense, but a whopping three scavenge power. That is huge. So it goes here, and now we can go. We have two fuel currently. We are at minus two cooperation and minus one defense. So not great. We do make a lot of fuel, though. <laughs> that is true. Now, I think we should fix at least one of those two negatives. I don't think we can fix both. And the way I think to do this is to spend our first action taking two fuel, which feels bad considering our fuel production, but we had to throw some fuel at the zombies because of our negative cooperation. Now we have four fuel, which means we can afford to go up here. We can spend two for the jump and then two for trucks. This is a very good tile. It's four cooperation and just one minus defense. That means we could upgrade our horses to trucks and not affect our defense, which is still negative, but we would increase our cooperation three times, which would make us positive. We could also <laughs> throw caution to the wind and put trucks up there. That would lower our defense once, but it would give us four cooperation, which would give us more fuel, but it wouldn't be great for zombies. Once again, if we were here and we got two zombies, we can no longer score positive points until we get rid of those zombies. So I think we'll be a little cautious again. Last turn, we got a bus. This turn, we're going to get trucks replacing horses. That is going to increase our cooperation to plus one. All right. We are done, which means blue can go. And the next action is advantage. All right. They have one icon showing. Yellow also has just that icon from their track. <laughs> and then we also have one icon. It's not from our track, though. We need to deal with those zombies. Uh, we instead do get one from our wood barracks, though. So everyone gains one advantage. I was hoping that wood barracks would let us catch up, but I suppose keeping pace with our opponents isn't the worst thing. Well, that revealed tile is Sniper Tower. It is a gray four. It lowers defense once, but it increases scavenging by one and advantage by one. So that will go over here. And before we move on, I actually want to mention a new type of tile that we haven't discussed just yet. That is the gray tiles that you see out here. For example, this underground spring. Now, whenever you buy a gray tile, you do what it says immediately, and then you discard the tile from the game. This underground spring just gives you one advantage immediately. These dogs also give you one advantage. 
This shortwave radio lets you immediately remove three zombies from your board. Once again, when you buy a gray tile, you immediately have to use it and then they go away. There's some more way up at the top with irrigation system getting two advantage. Same thing goes for this medicine supply over there. Well, blue can now take their actions. Their first one is going to simply be gaining two fuel. And for their second action, they're going to buy this command center. It costs two because it's one row above and two for the tile. And then they can place this fortification down. They have six options to choose from. The command center does have a scavenge icon, and they love the idea of getting a third scavenge icon, but after thinking about their situation, they are going to upgrade their wooden fences to the command center. That means they still just have the two scavenge icons. Now, that is going to lower their cooperation once, bringing them to negative two, but it will increase their defense by two. So, they go from one up to three, and that finishes their turn. This means yellow can go, and this is the final three, so we all know it's going to be a defense action. Yellow is currently at positive one, so they remove one zombie. And we're at minus two. Crap. <laughs> we're going to gain two zombies. All right. I was trying so hard to not have a zombie go onto the you can't get point spot, but it's happened anyway. We really have to do something about our defense. This zombie goes here, and again, the moment there's any number of zombies here, we can no longer gain advantage in any way. So yeah, our priority in the very near future is going to be lowering this zombie count. Lastly, blue is doing great at defense. Their cooperation isn't amazing, but they're at plus three defense. That means they remove three zombies. They're two zombies away from revealing another one of those advantage icons. Speaking of revealed icons, I do want to point out that if you have no zombies on here and you still have zombies to remove, you instead gain one fuel for each zombie you didn't have to remove. All right, the revealed tile is rifles. It is a gray three. It lowers cooperation by one, but it increases defense by two. That is a lot. This goes right over here. And now yellow can perform their two actions. For their first action, they're going to spend two fuel to buy shotguns. It is in the same row, just barely, as that scavenge token. They could replace their machetes with this, but they would really like to unlock some more fortification spots on their board. They're going to place the shotguns over knives. That's not great. That does lower their defense by one and lowers their cooperation by one, but it does increase their fuel production by four. That could easily make up for the maybe two fuel they'd have to spend to deal with that extra loss in cooperation. That's, of course, as long as they get fuel before they need to do the cooperation action. I suppose they have some spaces to put zombies as well at the moment. They have three fuel left, and they just don't think they can pass up on the lookout towers. That will cost them two fuel since it's in their same row, and they are going to place this into either one of these unlocked fortification spots. Now, this does do bad things to their tracks. That's going to lower their defense by two, which means they are at minus two defense and minus one cooperation. It's not great to be minus in both of these tracks. However, they are prioritizing the scavenge symbols. That adds three, so they went from two up to five. They really want to continue to get up the tracks to make their fuel more efficient. They are a little worried about their current situation, but again, they have a bit of runway for extra zombies, and they are definitely hoping to get a fuel action before a cooperation action comes along. All right, that finished Yellow's turn, and at this point, it would be time for our turn, but I think this is a good moment to bring this tutorial to a close. Every player has performed five turns so far, and remember, in a three-player game, each player gets to do 12 turns, so we've each played almost half of the game. Now, it's true, we are down here still, but as you can see, as we go deeper into the stack of tiles, the effects that we see are much more powerful. That lookout tower right there with the three scavenge can really help you shoot up this track. Many of these higher-level tiles do a lot to the overall tracks and can change your situation in significant ways when you purchase them. And of course, we're getting up to the spot where we can start activating these gray tiles for one-time great benefits, like removing three zombies or just getting those advantage points. Now, before I wrap up the tutorial, I do want to briefly mention that every one of the player boards is double-sided. This is the normal side that we've seen so far, but there is also a symmetric difficult side. So the back of these all looks the same with this layout. As you can see, there is an entire missing spot to put tiles down. When you count these out effectively, you are losing one of the transportation locations that's available to you. 
I will note that the zombie track is longer than the track that we have over here, but that's because you have a much more difficult time dealing with everything that you have. One thing to note is there are just less negative icons over here to cover, which means you have a harder time getting up these tracks right at the beginning of the game. Now, again, we've been seeing the normal sides. I just wanted to show this to you, and I do want to point out that when you're playing this game, some players can be on difficult while others are on normal. That's a good way to balance things out between new players and people who are experienced with the game. Well, at this point, I've covered just about all of the rules to the game, so that means this tutorial is coming to a close. I hope you enjoyed learning how to play City of the Living. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.